Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Kind of Change. We're going to talk about Brittany Renner. Let's just get to the video. Mm -hmm. That's what you're looking for. Storybook. I mean, is, is, is true love, is it something that you've read or is it something that you've experienced and you know what it's like? I can't say that I've ever experienced it necessarily just because I feel that I would be with that person, but it's always something that's been on my heart. And if it was put on my heart, it was for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's because it exists. Just like you're able to manifest the way that you are because it's put on there for you to mm -hmm. materialize. Right. Same here. I think a lot of people think that it's not going to happen for me because of the way that I carry myself or different versions of me that they're stuck on, but it's on my heart for a reason. That's why I've had to experience the flip side of the coin, the darker side of the coin where I've had a lot of heartbreak and disappointments because how else would I appreciate true love when right. it comes to me? Because I've had everything come to me so easy, even with soccer. Right. I didn't have to practice. I was good, I'm good, good great. I mean, that's just what it was. I didn't have to. That, that's what it was. So it's like when you don't know the value of anything because things come to you so naturally because you're beautiful, because your body, the followers, the social media, the notoriety, you don't value shit. Right. So Here's my thing, Brittany. Um, let me start with this. I don't know why the volume is so low. So I apologize for that. It's not me. I'm checking everything here. But yeah, for some reason that this video is really quiet. So let me say this. Brittany is... <laughs> She lives in such a fantasy world. And that's why I would say, guys, I understand she's attractive. I understand she's got a following. I understand she's got money. She gets with really great guys. But if you're a person, and Shannon does make a good thing if you watch the whole interview, she talks about how an average man she would never go for. But at the same time, it's like she's saying that only a high-value man would date her. Fine. But why would they date her? This woman just said that she wants true love and everything has came easy to her. Brittany, if you get in a relationship and it's hard, I think the second it gets hard, you're out of there. You just said everything comes easy to you. So are you saying that true love is hard? And if you're saying that is hard, you can tell by your life, you take the easy route almost all the time. This lie that you keep saying about, oh, I would thought I wanted to get with the baby's father. I had a baby by him because I thought this and that and this and this and that. No, Brittany, it's you. You foolishly got with somebody who was a young man because you thought you could get him. You thought it was you thought that was the way to life. I'm not saying you're trying to be a gold digger, but at the same time, it's like it makes complete sense. I can understand a woman getting with somebody who's going to be a multimillionaire for at least the next 10, 12 years of his life. I don't think she's wrong for doing that. So she thought she had finally cashed in her ticket after all the bodies she's been with, after all her past, after all the stupid things she said, after all the things she said that she prays on men. This was her golden ticket out to finally let all that go. And it did not work. So she keeps saying stuff about true love. And it's it's like it's, what she thinks true love truly is, is that she's going to find a man who's going to be everything she wants. Everything she wants is she's going to be everything he wants. How is that possible? There's no way a guy, if a guy says, I want somebody who hasn't been with that many men, you're immediately going to say, oh, he's, he's not my true love. He's not this. He's not that. But it's like, I, I'm going to let y'all, I'm going to let the video keep playing because I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> I really am. That's why I think for me. This so you didn't have an appreciation of anything? No, because I could get whatever I want. So going through some of the stuff I went through the last couple of years, I've really got to see what I've made of. When you were at Jackson State, were you in a sorority? No, my grades weren't good enough. <laughs> Damn, Britt. Did, I mean, so you, you, were just at, you were just at college kicking it. I mean, I wouldn't even say, well, I was shacked up. I was playing like, like house. You were shacked in college? Mm-hmm, in the Palisades. People at Jackson out there, where that is. Palisades, mm-hmm, playing house. Mm -hmm. Your grandmother would be so disappointed. I mean, she was alive when that happened. And what was she gonna do? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying that's what I'm saying. She's gonna be disappointed because she's gonna say, Brittany, I, I raised you better than that. Or at least I thought I did. Honestly, no, right. Was... No, no, go ahead. No, no, no. Honesty. Honesty is the key. Honesty is the best I'm not policy. Even, I don't really. My grandma said she never stuck. So I'm not even really looking oh, at Oh, Lord. <laughs> See what I'm saying, guys? Why would you say that about your grandmother? She said, well, my grandmother never sucked. And hold on, uh, let, let me let that clip play just a couple more seconds. Come on! She don't, you gonna put she ain't experience life! You gonna put grand 
So <laughs> your grandmother never giving oral sex is something that you should be. And she said she never experienced life. See, that's what I'm talking about, Brittany. Like you think that somebody didn't go out there sucking on every pole that they saw. It meant they didn't experience life. Why do we have this concept in our heads that sex is the only way to experience life? I mean, I, we hear this all the time when somebody gets made fun of for being a virgin, right? They'll be like, oh, he's a virgin. He don't know what it's like to live life. It's crazy. And it's the same thing with women. It's like, oh, she ain't never sucked the pole. She ain't never rode. No, she ain't never been on the, uh, what did, what did, uh, uh, the Carol, whatever you call that thing, the merry-go-round, but it's called something else. Anyway. Yeah, she, she's never been on that. She's never been bouncing up and down. It's just like, that is not what makes somebody experience life. Why do we have this concept that sex is the only way in this life? If you experience everything else, if you go be a missionary or you go help people or you're in the military or you're doing this with your life or you let's say you go to the NFL, or you go be a professional football player, professional volleyball player. You just are just a family man or something like that. You can go do so many great things in life, but if you haven't had sex, you haven't experienced it. And doesn't that sound like the stupidest thing on the planet? There are so many people who are nuns, monks, and all these things, and they do great things for humanity, but you would say they've never experienced life because they've never had oral sex? Like, what the fuck are we talking about now? You know, that's just so frustrating to me because it's such a disrespect to all the people in this world that have done so much for humanity to try to push it forward in a world that is just written with all this romantic intimacy, for lack of a better word. And they think that if they don't do that, that they have nothing to contribute to humanity. They can't talk about anything because they've never written a poll. It's just so dumb to me. And I want to say something else. Brittany talks about how. She didn't say it here directly, but she does say later in the interview, I suggest you go watch the whole thing. She does talk about, I can get whatever I want. And that's what she says. She says that people want to say that she can't get what she wants. And she truly believes that no matter what she does from this point forward, if she sleeps with 30 more guys, if she goes on a tirade, if she acts insane like she did with Charleston White on that podcast, she thinks she can do nothing to prevent her from getting true love and getting a man. She just believes that she gets whatever she wants in this life. But you clearly don't because you got a baby with no husband. So that is a case and scenario. You do not get whatever you want. Okay. You say you had a baby with a man because you thought that was going to be your husband. But oh, he's not. So is that getting what you want? And she would probably say something like, well, you know, I made the decision not to shut up. Guys, and like I said before, man, it's just, these kind of women will ruin your life because they are only going to make them. So, because, you know, just kind of like a, I hate to go back to Travis Kelsey and the Taylor Swift thing, because I don't believe that's really a relationship that's going to happen. But just in case it does, you know how Travis talked about his celebrity crush was Taylor. That. It's already ruined the whole relationship because you're going to make it seem like he is lucky to get with Taylor. So she's going to be on pedestal every day. Brittany will probably only get with a man who puts her on a pedestal. And then when he puts her on a pedestal, she won't respect him. And she's probably she says she wants to get with a man that's going to lead her. She did. She sound like a woman that's going to follow a man who's like, Brittany, I don't want you to wear that. Brittany, can you please not twerk on the table? Brittany, can you calm down with all the vulgar stuff every time you go on a podcast? Can you just act ladylike? You think she's going to listen to that? Heck no. It's just going to be a headache the entire time. Any idea like that? She put her, she's over here disrespecting her grandmother. I would never say that to y'all about my grandmother. Well, my grandmother never had sex. We're like, what the heck are we talking about? Have some respect. I think her grandma passed away. It's just like, come on, man. Look, she don't give a fuck. She's like, a, she's like, she's like a little, and that's what people always say, man. I know I'm, I'm talking a lot, but I'll let y'all finish with that's what people say is that these people who get all this attention when they're young, they get stuck at that age. Like she get it all. She got all this attention when she was probably 18 to 22 and she can't get out of it now. She's just stuck in that. She can't grow up. Dion asked you to come back and speak to the kid, to the, to his team, the young men at Jackson State. Did you prepare to like, okay, I'm going to touch on this, this, and this, or you just went up there and let it flow from the heart? <clears throat> well, I, originally I just wanted 
tickets to the game. I think it was a homecoming game or something. And he's like, no, I want you to speak to my team. So in my mind, I was just like, okay, I don't really know what, I don't know what about. I guess right. he said the game of life. Right. And I'm curious because I know that you asked him about it. Did he ever get into detail about what we discussed? No. The, and you've never seen the footage, right? I saw some of the footage, but like I said, mm -hmm. I don't like, because I, I was like, okay, one day I would like potentially for her to be on my podcast. Now, obviously okay. that was happened a couple of years ago, so I was going to let some time pass by yeah. before I ask for you to come on my uh, um, on my show. So, but I didn't want I didn't want to sway any of the questions that I could potentially ask. And okay. hopefully, I, I'm trying to ask questions. I kind because I've kind of seen and, and and my researcher and my producer CJ I think does a great job of making sure that we don't we, we try not to touch on yeah. a whole lot of things that you've already spoken about. So that's why I wanted to start back from the beginning. I wanted okay. to Brittany Nicole Renner. I want a. I'm, I'm taking it back. Yeah, I mean, I think what I didn't like about speaking at Jackson State is because the way that it was marketed was right. that I was a cautionary tale. tale. Oh, That's okay. not what, if you were to play back the whole footage, what am I warning you guys about? Because if I was a gold digger, I would be easily the dumbest one. I'd be the least successful one. Like, mm -hmm. I am not in a position to tell young men about gold diggers or what women do or because the friends that i have they're yeah not, you know what not in this i do agree with that i had no idea why dion sanders had her speak because i even i thought it was a cautionary tale like if it wasn't a cautionary tale what the heck does britney have like what can britney tell you what can britney tell a bunch of young men whose aspirations are to go to the nfl or to be successful in life like, what can she tell? Like, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but, like, what do we know Britney for as an Instagram model? And I'm sure she has money and she has brand deals, but the way she portrays herself, it's like she doesn't ever talk about anything important. Like, I've seen some of her interviews. Like, it always goes to how many people do you have sex with? True love. I rarely hear anything about the middle part of, hey, well, how do you get brand deals outside of my, you know, what if I'm not attractive? How do I do this? You we know how she got brand deals. She was born with great looks and a great body that she, to be fair, she kept her body in shape. But somebody who doesn't look like Britney, I mean, what can you learn from her? If you look like Britney, you probably don't need her help. You'd be like, oh, I already know what to do. Stay in shape. That's it. You know? And I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know what Britney could have said to a bunch of young men that could have helped them, except for to be a cautionary tale. But let's hear what she has to say. Business. Mm -hmm. They are call center, nurses, work at a, a, a freaking um, enterprise. Mm -hmm. So when I, I didn't like that it made it seem like I'm coming in there and I'm telling you guys, hey, don't get got. That's not what happened. Okay. So. Well, tell, give us a brief synopsis. Okay. You get called he, and he said, guys, I'm bringing someone to in front of you today to speak to you. That's going to give you some, 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 some light gonna give you some game that's the way he likes you like I'm gonna give you game and this person um, although the package is is nicely bundled in a nice neat presentable package you need to hear the message that she's going to say so you walk up there and everybody like so now you know what's going on hey I mean, I can just imagine, hell, if I'm an 18, 19 year old, someone like yourself walks in, I'm thinking the same thing these probably young men thinking. So now I've got to set lustful thoughts aside yeah. and hear what you have to say. I think we did, Deanna and I did a great job kind of spitballing and he would, you know, help set up the questions mm -hmm. and different things he wanted me to answer. But what I shared was my experience and to not waste women's time because, you know, hell hath no fury, like a woman scorned. So, oh, really? But don't try to correlate. No, 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 I just, I don't, I don't, I'm not a woman. So you're asking me It's just the way, you know why you said it. You've been no, why, what you mean, why, how, why I said it? How did I say it? Okay. We're going to leave Brittany, the undertone. No, 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 Brittany, no, no. Because no. you're like, oh, really? I, so you're familiar. No. I mean, I'm asking you. So this is new information. Is that, is that what warranted Brittany, that response? Brittany, you're asking me as a man, 
to speak to a situation that I would know nothing about considering that I'm not a woman. So I don't know what's going on. Because me, sure things have happened, but I have to move it along. I don't get the luxury of being able to be scornful and to lash out or to retaliate. If someone says, don't call me again, I don't have the luxury of calling you again because that is harassment. Shannon Sharp called me harassment. I'm going to be in the paper. I'm going to lose my job. So you can understand that I'm, I, I, I'm speaking to things that I, I don't have the luxury of being able to do. I See, you see how good Shannon goes about that? Brittany is one of the most defensive people I have ever watched. I'm not even kidding. Right? And you know what's funny, though? It is this, I don't even, this is not a woman thing. This is a Brittany thing. No matter what you say, I, once again, go watch the whole interview and check it out. And watch just a tad bit more. But I want to say this. If you watch Brittany, she is one of the most defensive people people ever it's like you can't say anything to her that's even remotely that she could take offensive he just said oh really you know there's nothing like a woman scoring it shannon's just being shannon he's like that with guys she's acting like it's personal shannon was like this with everybody he interviews he always pushes it he pushes he does that with ocho cinco he does that with stephen a smith he has done that with skip bayless he has done that with people he's interviewed I mean, it's just like he always plays around like that, but she takes it like, oh, you're saying I'm a whore? That's pretty much what I got out of that. It's like anything he says, she immediately gets defensive because she knows how people see her. But Brittany, that's your own fault. That's all you can, you've got to deal with that. Okay, if you want to move on from your past, good luck to you. You can do it, but the way you react is, is it makes it seem like you are the one who can't let go. It'd be different if somebody says like, so, Brittany, I heard you. Uh, you said you said publicly that you had sex with 35 men. So how you feel about that? And she was just like, you know what? I regret saying that. Um, I shouldn't have put that out there. And I'm, I, I know that's going to make it harder for me to po possibly find a man. And I, I just want to move forward off that and uh, just keep trying to go better. But, you know, I do I do realize that that's probably going to hurt me in the long run. But that's something I'm going to have to deal with. And I've been trying to deal with and I've been talking to people. That would be a much better answer than Hey, Brittany, I've heard you had sex with 35 men and you made that public. Is there, what do you want to say about that? Oh, so I had sex with 35 men, huh? Okay, listen here. When you get a taste of this meow meow, that's just how it goes. That's how it is. And if a man can't handle that, then he's not my true love. He's not a real man at the end of the day. See, that kind of reaction just kind of like... So... <laughs> And the reason I said that meow meow, because she says that here in this interview, that once you get a taste of that meow meow, that's what it is. It's just like, Brittany, see, you acting like you, you acting like the older you get, the better the kitty cat gets. It doesn't. Your kitty cat may be the, the thing that comes with your kitty cat is maybe the stigma of maybe getting you. But since you've had 35 men, I know that is worn off for a lot of guys. And a lot of men are afraid to do anything with you because they already know they're going to put get put on blast. They'll just be number 36. It's, you know what I mean? It's like it's not like you're, it's, you're worth getting because you're so public with your whole life. It's like that's going to scare men away, too. It's because they're like, I don't want to get with her because all it takes is one wrong move and she's going to put me on blast. She may not go really personal, but I'm just number 36 to her. I don't want a woman who's like this, who's so public about her life. You don't understand how much that scares a man to death because men know one wrong accusation or one wrong move and everything's ruined for them. I'm not saying Brittany would do that. I'm saying that her being public about even if you're just number 36, it's like, man, it's Brittany. I know if I do anything with Brittany, people are going to know it's me. And if I make a mistake getting with her and I know how bad of a person she is, maybe she yells at me, maybe she cussed me out, called me a nobody. I know she's going to make that somewhat public. I'm going to feel embarrassed getting with Brittany. It, to be honest with you, it'd be embarrassing to get with Brittany. Yes, she's great looking, but that but she's so public and men like their life to be private. We like our life to be shush. There's some men who like to put their their whole business out there. But a lot of men just will be like, don't talk about my relationship. Don't talk about what we do in the bedroom. Don't talk about my kids. What happens between me and you is because men have a hard time finding somebody they can trust. And if you have a wife who is public, that is the most scariest thing on earth. Because it's like, man, it just takes one screw up and it's all over for me. My whole life, my whole legacy. Everybody would know what goes on in my life when I'm trying. I want to be able to separate the successful me in my life. Men want to be able to separate this in my life. I don't want my life out there like that. Yes, but you also, because.
because I've listened to a few of your videos more recently, yes. leading up to this day, where you are very big about whatever your dating life is in private, and yeah. that you don't want it to be public. It's See, just, just like you said, if you if you date in private, you can break up in private. Yes. So, you, you but can they were doing it in let me finish my okay. thought. Okay. The reality Ooh, man, that make me is hot. that you know what I'm talking about. That's why you are you move the way that you move in dating because you can't just be out here all willy nilly and mm -hmm. and da -da 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 -da, whatever you're doing, especially publicly, because if you do some <laughs> publicly, you're gonna have to answer to it publicly. Right. But I'm saying in general, a lot of men with status, I mean, who are, who are they supposed to date? They're gonna go after women who typically have less than them. And even women who may have greater than or equal to. Still, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Well, o Oprah's taken. Beyonce is taken. You would date Oprah? No, uh, I'm just saying. Cancel. No, <laughs> you, you talk, no, I'm saying, when you talk about men of high value, and and, and look, we're we gonna talk about- We men. gotta differentiate that, sweetie. Okay, so let's just say men Half a million, million on up. Mm -hmm. The pool of dating the equivalent is not the same. You know that. Oh, yeah. Water's wet. So, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So when you say, oh, men to have, they're going to date women less than, water's wet. But that's what, okay, so I'm going back to a lot of people, uh -huh. male or female, right. don't have a lot to lose. So when there are these breakups, or if there was somebody who was maybe dating with ill intentions, when that stuff happens, it can get really messy. Right, right. So it can get messy, especially when you don't have that much going for yourself. Cause you're like, oh, this person was my way out. So now I'm going to out them or post screenshots. Like there's been so much stuff in the- You wrote a whole book. Let's not forget that. Certain things and you know what I'm talking about right. without saying there any names, but, but that type of stuff. Right. When you, <laughs> I remember Let's when- hear it. I'm trying to think, I don't know if you said it on a, a, a radio show or TV show about your dating prowess. You was with one man, two men, three men, four men over the course of a 24 hour, 48 hour span. <laughs> Did you think about the ramifications of how people, men, women, everybody would look at you because, or does that not bother you? Or you learn to tune that out? So you're referring to one in similar, I can actually recall it, pinpoint it perfect for you. There was a video that I did in my car where I was talking about how I had sex with, was it three men in a, a day? Yes. And then I ended up getting a yeast infection. Uh, you made the video, why are you asking like, we're supposed to know, you made the video. <laughs> what, I, didn't I say two, three men? You made the video, tell me. You should know how many guys you've been with. Yes. That was, I came out pretty unscathed for just a yeast infection. Right. You see what I'm saying? All right, this is the last thing I'm here. Considering what I could have gotten. Right. Um, it wasn't that, you know, oh well, man, I hope people don't- kid out of it. I mean, they talk oh, about- I was, I, was, I, I was on birth control for 10 years before I had my son. I got off of it because there was a conversation with my child's father. Okay. So I, I again, the whole trapping thing, can't trap the willing babe. And on top of that, I never wanted to have a, I looked at kids as you never wanted a baby. Be a, you never wanted a baby daddy, you wanted to be a mom. You didn't want to yes. be a baby mama, you wanted to be a wife. And that's why I waited so long. I had my baby when I was 29. I thought I was doing it right. I thought that was my guy. And I, I never really liked kids. I always thought I referred to them as crotch goblins, to be honest, <laughs> you know, but as I got older, I wanted one. But, but, did, you, but, did, but did you think did that- Did I think about the ramifications yes. of telling people that I had sex with multiple men? Yes, I don't care, it's the truth. If you don't, if you don't see me as, a potential dating person, then great, one less heart to break. Leave me alone, and I'm gonna continue to live but my you, truth. But, but you do understand, Brittany, that's hard for a man. Look, like you said, public versus private. Now, if you and I having a conversation, and we're, you're sitting here, we have a conversation, and you say, well, Shannon, I slept with this many men. Okay, that's one thing. That's between you and I. But to have that conversation, and then everybody, Sam, John, and everybody else knows it, that's a whole different, that's a whole different, that's a whole different ball game, Brittany. That's fine with me. I mean, I feel that. But see, that's selfish, because all you're thinking about is you. What about him? He has got to be with you. He has got to be with me? You know what I'm the, saying? He has the privilege to be with me. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so, I told y'all later she says that. It's a privilege to be with you, Brittany. See, that's what's the, okay, rant incoming. Just go ahead and buckle up because I'm, I'm about to, oh, I'm so upset now. Privilege to date you? 
it's a privilege. To, what did I say about earlier when I just said that you got to be careful when you date some women like this because they're always going to make you put them on a pedestal. And when you put them on a pedestal, one thing they're going to say is, oh, I can't respect him because I, he, I, he can't lead me. She is setting herself up for failure for the rest of her dating life. And she's going to sit on here. Hold on a second. She's going to sit on here and say, it's a privilege to date you. How the hell is it a privilege to date you at this point? Because you got a nice body. There is a lot of women with nice bodies. I'm sorry. Oh, because you're Brittany Renner. Who the hell is Brittany Renner? I'm being honest with you. Who is Brittany Renner? What is she known for? Like outside of having a nice body, having a kid, being with a couple NBA players and some rappers. What is she so good at, right? She's got money. Wow, there's a ton of people in this world that have money. What is the privilege of being with a 30-year-old woman now who has had 35 men, is a baby mother, and every time she gets a chance to talk about her sexual life, you will find her on the camera. She just twerked on Charleston White. She threw water on a man. She called another man and told her, told another man to come fight her. He, she told a world championship boxer, a world championship, world heavyweight champion boxer to come punch her in the face, pretty much. She said, come bat me in my eye. She was willing to do all of that. So tell me, if you got somebody who is a loud mouth, who is showing that she could be violent by throwing water on men, she does not know personally like that. She's twerking on men she don't know personally like that. She talks about her sex life, and she's a baby mother, and all she ever talks about is true love and asteroids and the stars coming together to align perfectly to make her life great. And she always says, oh, I just get whatever I want because you know why? Because I'm Britney Ritter. Who the hell is Britney Ritter? I don't get that, man. Who is she? Who? What makes her so special outside of looking good? I'm sorry, guys, but too many of our men today, I'm so sick of the... I hate using the word simp, but that's just the way that people understand what I'm talking about. But I just cannot stand young men or any men who are just so stupid that they only think that looks is what's going to get them through. That if a woman looks good, it just trumps every damn thing in the world. No matter how many times we see men's lives ruined by women, no matter how many times we see men get themselves in so much trouble because they were going after a woman because she looks so great, no matter how bad a woman treats you, no matter how bad a woman demeans you, no matter how bad she makes you feel, it does not matter because she looks good. I get so damn I'm tired of hearing about oh because she's so hot man i would do all this and all that and all this and you would marry her just because she's hot it's just like that's so stupid i get if a woman looks good but she's also most people around her would say she's a good person but how often do you hear anybody come out and say you know what britney is the best person i've ever had i mean i mean like not like that i mean britney is the best person i've ever spoke to she's such a nice person in public i mean i know when she gets on camera she's violent and she cusses and she's vulgar and she talks about her sex life you would think that she would be <laughs> like this in private but she's not she's really a great person to be around i haven't heard anybody come out and say that men don't even come out and talk about her because they know how britney is she made a whole book talking about all the men she's been with does this sound like somebody you it would be a privilege like why is it a privilege outside of her looking good and having a nice booty how is it a privilege to be with her or there not tons of women out there if you just go to your instagram right now and click in booty how many booties are you going to see that look nice. I mean, we got to at some point separate good looks from a person being good. I understand the psychology that when we see somebody who is very good looking, we tend to think they're a good person. And some of us want to see past Britney and the way she talks because of how good she looks. It's just like, but it, she's disgusting. She's a disgusting person. Not her character. I'm talking about what she does. When she was twerking on Charleston White, when she was throwing water on men, when she was calling a man the B-word for her, throwing a water bottle at him. Don't forget that. She threw a water bottle at him and then made him seem like he was at fault when he got upset. He's like, don't throw water bottles at me. I'm not that kind of dude. And she's going to say, well, come hit me there. Or she says, don't talk to me. Or don't. And then she's going to call a man a bitch to his face. And that's the kind of woman that it would just, oh my God, I pray every day for a woman like Britney Renner to come into my life and fuck it all up. Because I don't see any benefit at this point. The way Britney talks at to this point, I don't see any benefit of getting with her. 
no benefit, zero benefit. Even if we just want to talk about physical, that is a benefit that does not last long, men. We all know. Let's be honest. If you're a married man and let's say you married a really attractive woman, we have seen men get divorced from very attractive women and women divorce really attractive men. Let's be honest with ourselves. If you get married to somebody, even if they have the nicest body you've ever seen, it gets old after a while. Okay. You have you have intimacy because you love them. But if you make marriage strictly physical, if marriage is strictly physical and all you do is think about how much you can pump and dump. OK, I'm sorry I'm being vulgar, but let's be honest. I'm just talking to y'all. If that's all you think about marriage is and you think that's what's going to sustain it, you're in it for a rude awakening. There is <laughs> marriages fall apart all the time because that's what ends up happening. If it's just physical, it will die fast because no matter who you are, I know the beauty of having and there is something special about intimacy with somebody that you love. But if you get with somebody and you think somebody like Brittany Renner, you get with her and your whole goal is, oh, man, she'll just be great to have sex with every day. It will get old. You'll get tired of hearing getting called uh, getting called outside your name. You get tired of getting in arguments. You're going to get tired of her saying she's better than you. You're going to get tired of her saying that she can go find another man. You're going to get tired of paying all the damn bills and still feeling like you're a nobody. You're going to get tired of that shit. You're going to get tired of it. And the sex is not going to be enough to warrant it. You're going to be like, damn, I could, I could masturbate if it's that dang important. You will think these things. You will let it go. Because I can tell you, and men, y'all can say this and I mean, y'all know what it's like to be with a woman. And yes, she has a nice body and everything's great. But man, is she one of the most annoying people or she's one of the most disrespectful people or she's just somebody you just almost hate being around because you can't stand her. I don't understand what Brittany can offer that any other woman can't offer you. What else is she going to bring to your life? Because you can't get none of her money. You might as well go ahead and scrap that, even if she has a ton of it. Women don't give away their money. And that's fine. They, they, they expect the man to do all the buying. So you're getting zero money out of her. What, is she going to cook? Okay, that's great. You think Brittany's just going to cook because she wants to cook? No, she's going to expect a lot out of you. And it's not like you're not doing anything. So what, is she going to cook and clean? Damn, I can get a maid to do that. That's what I'm saying. Like the stuff that she's saying she could provide. I can if I'm a man of money that can get Brittany, you don't think I can't hire a damn maid? The person she's probably looking for for is probably a multimillionaire. You don't think he has enough money to hire a maid for 15 bucks an hour? You don't think he can't hire a maid to do the cooking or hire a personal chef if he really wants cooking that bad? You don't think he can get those things? And if the only thing she's gonna say is this kitty cat, oh my gosh, I'm a multi-millionaire. You know how many women I could get? So I'm saying for any man who, and I'm saying, I'm not saying average man because she won't go for average making man. That's fine. I don't care. My point is, if she gets with a man who's a multi-millionaire, he could get that from any woman on the planet. Dang near. He's the top one percenter. Most women will want him. He can get somebody who is much better than Britney when it comes to certain things. The only thing he gets with Britney is a headache. I don't see the benefit of dating Britney at this point in your life. There's nothing she can give you that another woman can't give you when you're making that much money. And I honest, I don't know why women get mad about that when somebody says, well, if I'm a multimillionaire, if I can get somebody who's not you, if I can get somebody who's not 30, a baby mother and it's public about everything she talks about. And she's twerking on strangers and throwing water bottles at men and telling them to come fight her. I think I can get a woman who's better than that. I'm sorry. I think I can find one better than that out of the tens of thousands of women that want me because of how much money I make. You know what I'm saying? So I hate that she said that. Oh, it's a privilege to date me. How? You're nothing special, Brittany. I'm sorry. And I don't mean that rude, but a lot of us aren't that damn special. There's normally somebody better than us in a lot of categories somewhere. It's rare that you meet somebody who's better than everybody in everything. None of us are special. And that includes you. Okay. Because you know how many women you've slept with? You see, I'm done. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Go watch the interview if you want to. But once again, man, uh, stay away from women like this, man. It just won't work out. They're just going to make their looks and their body their whole purpose of why you should get with them. That's it. There, she has nothing else to offer that some woman, another woman couldn't offer. I'm just being honest. All right. Peace.